Thank you, Michelle. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. A few years ago, Martina Navratilova took a look at this six-foot wonder and thought she might make a pretty good doubles partner. How right she was. They obviously made an excellent team, and together they still hold the longest winning streak on the women's tour. To introduce Pam, please welcome our 2000 Hall of Famer, Martina Navratilova. Martina? Thank you very much. Sorry, I can't see without these. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, Pam, for asking me to uh, do this. That is an honor. Okay, here is how I think it all started. A little more than 40 years ago, this little but long girl was born. And when the doctor slapped her on the back, she slapped him right back. And realized, hey, that was a pretty good forehand volley. I think I will work on that and make something of myself. And she did just that. In the fall of 1980, when I asked Pam Schraver if she would like to play doubles with me the following year, little did I know that that year would turn into 10 and turn us into one of the greatest teams that ever played the game. Yep. So glad I made that phone call. In this world of a very individualistic sport that tennis is, it was truly an honor to be one half of a very dynamite team but it was also a lot of fun. I mean, we had a great time. Sure, we had our ups and downs, but we always would sit down, talk it out, and on we went, and on and on, and on and on. And like I said, we had fun. I'm sure some of you had wondered what we talked about on the changeovers. Well, because we talked a lot. So let me tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> you don't want to know. Sometimes it had to do with tennis, sometimes it had absolutely nothing to do with tennis. Like I said, we had fun. There have been people that suggested that without me, Pam would not have made it into this Hall of Fame. Well, they are wrong. Pam Shriver would have won with a bunch of other people. Uh, actually, she did. Maybe not as much as she did with me, but, <laughs> or as often. But she did win tournaments as well as Grand Slams. And I would also remind these people that a few times I was on the losing end playing singles against Pam Shriver. So she was nothing to sneeze at as a singles player either. And I also know that thanks to this partnership, <clears throat> I have achieved a whole lot more than I would have without it. So thank you, Pam. <clears throat> but to me, more importantly, I think Pam Shriver has become a Hall of Famer in life. In her relatively young existence, she has had to deal with the death of her sister, Marion, and her husband, Joe. It was these tragedies, as well as other hardships, that have turned into Pam into an amazing human being. And I'm truly honored to be a part of your life, Pam. Thank you. So, let's see. An excellent tennis player, an excellent singles player, a fabulous doubles player former president of the Women's Tennis Association, a USDA board member, a TV analyst, a passionate tennis proponent. Yeah, I think we can let you in. <laughs> and to think it all started with just a little slap. <laughs> so without further ado, it is truly my honor and privilege to introduce to you the latest inductee into the Hall of Fame, my true friend, Pam Schreiber. This must be really important. It's my first speech with index cards. <laughs> Thank you so much, Martina, for making the effort to come here today and being my presenter. Uh, I can tell you when I received that phone call, I think it was like October the 12th at about 5.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> down in Deerfield Beach, Florida. I was called off the practice court because Martina was calling. And it resulted in this 10-year partnership 
that we are both so very proud of and is certainly one of the main reasons why I am standing here today. I can tell you the view I had alongside the greatest complete tennis player of all time, someone who's won over 160 singles and doubles titles, was spectacular. And I can tell you her view as my opponent was equally spectacular from her point of view. But as she mentioned, I did have a couple of wins and I'd now like to devote the rest of my speech to those wins. <laughs> I want to thank another partner of mine, somebody that I've been a partner with in the broadcast booth. Tony trabert has been my partner at the U.S. Open the last few years, and also he was my partner my very first telecast 20 years ago. And I think Tony Trabert is president of the Hall of Fame. He is a fantastic example of how the champions and the Hall of Fame members must give back to our sport, must give back to the Hall of Fame. He's an unbelievable example and somebody I look up to. Thank you, Tony. While we're on the Hall of Fame, and, and folks, I want to thank Mark Stenning and all of his staff, to Jan Leshley, the chairman, Joe Coleman, somebody near and dear to women's tennis as well as the Hall of Fame, and a fantastic volunteer leadership that is really inspiring. I want to congratulate Mats Wielander. Uh, his career was during my career, and a member a lot of the great moments, and I just want to mention one quick thing once again on that point, 1982 French Open. This year, 20 years later, I was back at the French for the first time for ESPN, and there was a driver of a car who was taking me back to where I was staying, and the driver talked about Mats and how, to this day, he and his 11-year-old son, when they compete on the tennis court, when they play tennis, they play by something called Mats's Rules. And I thought that is a fantastic legacy to a great champion. Well, I've already had several mentions of partnerships. And it's something so important in one's life. And I think doubles actually helped me realize that when efforts are joined together for a common goal, whether it's to win a tennis match, to grow the game, or to live life together. And when that effort is made better by working as one, then you know you are a part of something worthwhile. A month ago yesterday, in fact, George Lazenby and I tied the knot. And <laughs> he's worth applauding, believe me. And this now is the partnership that I cherish mo most. It's the most important partnership going forward. I've found in the past six or seven years, as my playing career slowed then stopped, that my ability to be open to and be committed to the ultimate partnership has grown. I do wish, however, that George had been able to see me one or two, seen one or two of my good matches instead of the four lousy sets of 35 and over doubles last year at Wimbledon. And therefore, about a month ago, when my mom shipped uh, some stuff back from Baltimore to L.A., there was a videotape of my last really good win in singles. It was over Groff at Madison Square Garden in 1988, her Grand Slam year. So over breakfast one day in the kitchen, slipped in the tape, and we got to watch Shriver beat Groff. And let me tell you what, it was really the best breakfast I've ever had. <laughs> A player's career is mostly built by one's parents and primary coach, and I've been blessed in both categories. As a recreational player, mom and dad loved the sport. When I was three or four, they'd inter they introduced me to the game, figured out how to keep me interested by doing all those fun and subtle things. While always loving and caring for me, they kept a distance from my tennis as I grew older that allowed our family to not be imbalanced by one child's activities or allow my, and then also therefore allow my independence. And because of that, and for so many other reasons, my love for you grows each and every day. Thanks, Mom and Dad. A partnership is also needed between parents and the children in the family. 
to have that healthy family atmosphere. My sister Eleanor is here, and I want to thank her for all of her support. When she was eight was when I was in the finals of the U.S. Open, and having a high-profile sibling is not that easy. And I also want to thank the extended members of my Shriver family for being here today. There are two people that are no longer with us today, and I want to remember my late husband, Joe Shapiro, passed away three years ago. He helped me make the transition from the pro game to the next phase of my life. He, he also helped me deal with the loss of my older sister, Marion. Marion was two years older than me, a school teacher, and my roommate. In fact, during the best years of my tennis career, we roomed together. And while you can be blessed with a new mate, you can never be blessed again by, with an older sibling, and I certainly miss Marion. Let me tell you what, not many 40-year-olds, and I turned 40 like 10 days ago, this is really a traumatic time for me. <laughs> not many 40-year-olds 40, 40 standing here being inducted into the Hall of Fame can have a grandmother with them. My grandmother, Moppy, flew in from San Diego yesterday. She's only 93 years of age. She has such a passion for the sport of tennis each and every day, and I know that is why I have such a passion for the sport. Moppy, God bless. When I was nine years old, I got in my Christmas stocking a gift certificate for a tennis lesson from Don Candy. Don became my coach during my developing years and many of my years on the tour. He recognized early on that a tall, duck-footed, attention deficit child should serve in volley, <laughs> should attack second serves and approach on short balls, basically smother the opponent from the net. I appreciated his wonderful Aussie sense of humor and his link to past generations of tennis players. And that's tennis players that I got to know because of Don. Thank you very much. There were three other very brave men who also took turns coaching me. And I was not easy to deal with. I had a temper, a petulant streak, as well as an overdose of stubbornness. First, Jeff Lamborn, who was the first coach to really help me, not just with my game, but on a regular basis, pick me up at age 11 and 12 from school, take me to the practice courts, and making sure during the Baltimore winters that I played some tennis. Starting in 1985, Hank Harris coached me for the next five years. Hank and Irene, actually, his wife, they met at a tournament in Zurich. So even Hank's life changed because of my tennis. And they're both here today. Eric Riley, he had the tough job, the mop-up job at the very end, the backside of a, of a career that it, we had some fun moments, but believe me, it was not all sunshine in the 90s for Shriver, but we had a great time, lots of, lots of laughs, and I appreciate everything you did. Many, I have many friends from Los Angeles, Baltimore, my hometown, my dear hometown, and the tennis world. I want to thank them as a group for all their support, and you'll be grateful that I won't thank each and every one of them individually. But I would like to mention a few that sort of take care of some important categories. First off, housing. When you're a tennis player, even a junior tennis player, oftentimes you get to stay with families. And I have had the most fortunate family here in Newport, Richard and Dee Gordon, who've been my Newport family. Thank you very much. Junior tennis friends, from the age of nine, Lisa Busco Johnson was across the net for me and she beat the hell out of me early on and then fortunately for my career, well, anyway. Lisa, thanks for being here today. <laughs> Tournament directors and promoters, Sarah Fornishari, I'm gonna read these, you guys hold your applause to the end, how about that? Tournament directors and promoters. Sarah Fornishari was the tournament director of the first tournament I played when I was 15 years of age in Washington, D.C. and the last tournament I played at 37 years of age in 1997. Sarah, thank you. Agents, Jill Smaller is here and she's helping me today with my broadcast career. I wanna thank you very much. Grand Slams, the four majors. The US Open, of course, has to be singled out. It's where I got to the finals. The USTA Board of Directors, who I'm in partnership with trying to grow the game, they're all here. I wanna thank the three presidents that I've served under, Merv Heller, who we've heard from earlier, Harry Marmion, who can't be here because his wife is singing in a choral group. 
and he sent me a, a note, and Harry's got his priorities right. Judy Levering, the first woman president of the USTA, my role model, thank you for being here. I also want to thank Rick Furman and the staff of the USTA. They are an incredible professional group. And there's another partnership that does so much for tennis. Players. I don't know, it's a tough one here, but I got to single out a couple. Zena Garrison. We won an Olympic gold medal together in 1988 in Seoul, Korea. She's a dear, dear friend, and I love you. Great to see you here. My broadcast partner, Mary Jo Fernandez, was supposed to be here, but her six-month-old came down with an ear infection. We played the U.S. Open Finals in 89. Somehow, rather, we lost to a team called Navratilova and Manlikova, but that's a whole nother speech. I want to thank Mary Jo for being my great partner on ESPN broadcasts to this day. Betty Stova is here. In 1980, we got to the finals of the U.S. Open, and then about five weeks later, Martina called me. So, Betty, thanks a lot. You helped a tremendous amount. Women's sports legends, a group that are here represented, and, and two individuals that just are incredible. Rosie Casals, who's become a dear friend and lives in the Northern California, and of course, Billie Jean King. Every woman tennis player who ever stands on this podium from here into eternity ought to thank Billie Jean King for all of her efforts and her leadership. Sponsors. Where would tennis be without sponsors? And representing the sponsorship category, you have to thank Philip Morris and Virginia Slims. And I have a lot of friendships from those years. WTA Tour. Peachy Kalmeyer is here. The WTA Tour, near and dear, is president of the organization. And Peachy's been around since I started to play. I don't know, probably since Alice Marble started to play. No, just kidding, Peach. <laughs> <laughs> Umpires, Lee Jackson is here. Lee Jackson called many of my matches. I yelled at Lee once or twice. We've had lots of laughs. She's like a mother for all the women on the tour. Lee, thank you. Administrators and just great tennis people, I want to thank Jane Brown for her long friendship. Started here at the Hall of Fame, the Women's Tennis Council, the USTA board, and just a good old-fashioned friend. Thank you very, very much. The home office in Baltimore. My Baltimore means so much to me. And two people, Mark and Genji, Mark Kantrowitz, Genji Vagness, they keep things going there. We want to run a charity event every year, and I couldn't do half of what I do without your help. Thank you so much. Now, you always need that lifetime friend, that friend that goes through the whole scene with you, right? From like the 12 and unders, and you yell at each other because of a bad call, and then you graduate on to the 14s, 16s, 18s. You both go to the pro tour. Except you're also born a couple of miles apart in the same town of Baltimore, and you become lifelong friends. Elise Bergen has been an unbelievable friend to me in so many ways, and I want to thank her very, very much. I'm on the last page of the index card, so... As you can see, I've been blessed with great relationships and fantastic partnerships. The sport of tennis, particularly doubles, teaches you in subtle ways about being a good partner. I truly believe what matters most in life is the quality of your partnerships. In closing, this day is one of the most emotional days. I've already cried about six, seven times, but thanks to tennis writers and voters, I want to thank them for including me with an incredible group of champions that's up there in the museum. And I really hope that everybody here, before you leave, either today or tomorrow after the finals, you go up to that museum and you visit all the great players from the late 1800s all the way through to today. It's a remarkable museum and hall of fame. And I want to thank everybody here that makes this great monument to our sport possible. It is truly humbling now to be on one of those columns up there as you walk into that first room and to share a column with Lendl, Navratilova, and Mats Bielander. So in closing, I want to thank again my partner of 10 years, Martina Navratilova, my friend for life, for coming today. She brought her beautiful dog with her as well. What's the dog's name? Madison. Madison. Martina is one of the great animal lovers of all time, and Madison made the trip as well. In the meantime, enjoy the tennis as well. We've got some great matches coming up, and God bless everybody.
Pam, congratulations, you got through it. <laughs> and it's my pleasure now to give you this enshrinement certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, our newest enshrinee, Pam Shriver. Congratulations.